If you're a live streamer or video pro, you might be wondering how the USB video output from the Rodecaster video stacks up against the ATEM SDI Extreme ISO. Does one handle highlight shadows and sharpness better than the other? I put them to the test. In this video, we're comparing the USB webcam output from both switchers to see how they hold up. I recorded and analyzed the UVC video signals to help you decide which one fits your setup the best. For the test, I used a Sony ZV-E10 outputting HDMI to an Atomos Ninja 5 to capture the full 4K signal at 29.97 frames per second in Apple ProRes LT. From there, I looped the signal into a decimator to downscale it to 1080p at 29.97 FPS. The HDMI feed went to the Rodecaster video while the SDI signal went to the ATEM SDI Extreme ISO. Both signals were recorded on separate Macs using OBS set identically at 10 megabits per second in MP4 format. Now obviously scaling 4K down to 1080p affects the image quality, but that's not what we're testing here. The goal is to see how each switcher handles compression and processes video over USB. Now one important note, this test is only about USB webcam output. If you're streaming using a built-in encoder on either switcher, your results will look different. This is strictly what you'd see if you were using Zoom, OBS, Restream Studio, StreamYard, or any other software that takes a USB webcam input. So how do they compare? Well, let's put them side by side to find out. So I'm in Premiere to analyze all of these clips side by side and see how things look and it's pretty wild just getting started here and seeing the difference. So I have three different sequences. The first one is the original versus the ATEM. So you can see the ATEM footage is on the left. The original is on the right. Then I have the ATEM versus the Rodecaster. ATEM's right over here. Rodecaster is over here split evenly down the middle. Lastly, I have the original footage that's out of the Atomos Ninja 5 and the Rodecaster footage on the right side. And it's actually split here. You can barely see it. So we're going to get into all of these. The biggest things I'm looking at are one, highlights versus shadows, two, sharpness. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit and see what happens. And then three, my final thoughts. But I think you can see a clear winner without really even doing a whole lot here. So first one original versus the ATEM. This is the original footage coming out of the camera directly into the Atomos Ninja versus the ATEM USB signal. And wow, right away, I mean, you can see the difference. It is a clear line here right down the middle. You can see the darkness in my beard. Uh, you can see quite a bit of lost detail in the beard as well. So shadows, and you're definitely gonna see the shadows over here in this area too. Uh, let me go ahead and actually turn this off just so you can see. Yep, so this is now showing the original and look at that difference in the shadows. We just lost all of this detail here and I know that it's a little bit noisy and grainy in there and that's just because I'm on a crop sensor on this camera, but you can just see it's a wild difference. So that right there, that is the ATEM signal and this is the signal from the original footage. So just drastic difference. You're actually losing a lot of detail in the shape right there. Um, this is my, my little dog statue. You can kind of see the outline of like his eyes here and like the whites of his eyes, but you're actually losing that once you get over to the ATEMS feed. So that is a drastic difference right there alone. Uh, as far as sharpness, I'm gonna zoom in in one sec, but first I just wanna go to uh, this split right here. Let me turn this back on so you can see. So again, ATEM on the bottom, original footage on the top, and what a difference this is making. So this is the original footage. It's a little bit lighter. You can just see so much more detail and information coming through, even in the blurred out background. I think that my face looks a lot better. The skin complexion looks a lot better here too. So if I turn this back on, you can see I'm just losing all of this detail in the beard here. It's just this dark, muddy shadow here. So that is the original versus the ATEM. Let's zoom in real fast while I've got you here. So I wanna go ahead and zoom in let's go to 400 percent wowie okay so you can see here this is the a10 footage again this is the original footage and i'm just gonna slide this over a little bit so you can see here yeah i mean night and day difference here 
Look at this. I mean, you're getting all of the detail in the beard coming through here, even when zoomed in at 400%. And once you look over at the ATEM side, you are just losing all of that. You can see it. I mean, all of this info that was here is just now completely gone. Now, the interesting thing is that because of the compression on the ATEM and the USB, it almost appears like it's removing some of the signal noise that's happening back here from the original footage, um, which is kind of wild, but uh, just something to take into consideration. Um, let me bring this back here. Let's go there. So yeah, so that's the original. You can actually see quite a lot of signal noise there in the background. But if I go ahead and bring this back, let's go here. Yeah, I mean, because it's getting crushed, we're actually losing a lot of that noise and it's just kind of becoming the blur in the background. Another thing I'm looking at here too is maybe like the detail in my shirt because I have a, a textured fabric here. So you can see that is the original and that is the ATEM feed. If anything, I think the ATEM feed is making it look a little naturally closer to the color that the shirt actually is, but I still overall like the more wider dynamic range look of the original Sony footage coming through. So let me just zoom back out again here. Let's go to fit. Yep, and so you can see this here. So that is the original footage. Overall, just really pleasant, uh, a little bit flatter, less contrastier, but kind of has that cinematic look that people are going for these days versus when I bring this across, this is my ATEM. That is a drastic, drastic difference. You can see a lot contrastier, a lot darker. It's almost pronouncing the sharpness a little bit more uh, because of just the contrast in the shadows. So it's not necessarily that the image is sharper, but it is slightly appearing sharper because of the contrast and what's happening there. Okay, let's move on to the ATEM versus the Rodecaster. So the Rodecaster, this is very interesting because it looks almost the same as the original versus the ATEM. So same sort of thing here, you can see if we're looking at the highlights versus the shadows, we're obviously losing all of this detail and information back here. If I turn this off for a moment, that is all of the ATEM right there. So you can see just the shadows getting completely crushed back here. There's no detail left. If I bring the Rodecaster back in, I'll have to uh, uncrop this here. Let's go this way, yeah. So you can see all the detail coming back in in the shadows. You can actually tell that that plant is green. You couldn't really see that before with the A10. There's like a slight green tint to it, but you just, you don't have that, any of that detail there uh, when comparing the A10 to the Rodecaster. Let's also look at this from a vertical perspective. So again, Rodecaster on the bottom, A10 on top. I do like some of the contrasty look with the ATEM, like I'm okay with that and maybe that's something where I could tweak my camera settings and adjustments later. Um, that to me looks decent, but then once you actually take out the uh, the Rodecaster footage and see all ATEM, you know, you might think that's fine just looking at it right off the bat, but then you bring in the Rodecaster down here and you're like, oh, interesting, there's so much more information down here. Trying to figure out though, there might be a slight green tint coming in here. So I'm almost wondering if maybe there's actually some green happening and we're losing that when it's getting compressed. So just something to think about. But yeah, like all of this back here, this is gone when you're on the ATEM. Like that is just a dark shadow versus Roadcaster. It's bringing all of that information back. So the green could be something I also tweak with some white balance adjustments. I'm still figuring out my lighting scenario here, but just very, very interesting here. So let me, um, let's see, we're gonna bring this back. So let's get this in and let's go ahead and zoom in. We wanna go to about 400% again. All right, and so same sort of deal at 400%. Um, just kind of looking at some of the detail here, you might be fooled as to whether or not this is sharper or not uh, because of the contrast that's happening. So this side again, this is the ATEM. So that's all ATEM footage. This is the Rodecaster footage. 
we're going to lose this detail regardless when we zoom in this far, right? This is not a normal amount of zooming that we would do, but I'm just looking at this detail in the beard right here. And when I turn off the roadcaster footage, it's all ATEM footage. That detail is just totally gone. Absolutely gone. Okay, so one more to show you all. Let me bring this back. Original versus roadcaster. Drum roll, please. Does anyone want to take a guess? Yeah, I'm actually showing you both the original and the roadcaster. The separator line is right about here. And this is where I want you to pay closer attention to that green tint that I was talking about. There's a very subtle difference here on the shirt, on the roadcaster, compared to the original footage. So this is something that's kind of wild happening here. I wasn't really seeing this happening with the ATEM, but let me, uh, let's go ahead and just bring this across. So this is all roadcaster footage now. And I'll slide it away slowly. You can see that line's very subtle coming across. Okay, and this is all original footage. Again, roadcaster, original. So very, very interesting what's happening. And I think what I'm actually gonna do is, okay, so Roadcaster, original. Roadcaster, original. It's very subtle. I want you to look at kind of the coloration of, these are white walls, but we've got some 5600 Kelvin lighting in here. So they have a little bit of a blue tint to it, but I just want you to see what's happening. So right now the Roadcaster footage is off. It's just the original footage out of camera and then boom. The roadcaster seems to be adding a slight green tint to everything. So this is what I want you to be just kind of paying attention to looking forward. Alrighty, and then here we're split vertically. So the roadcaster footage is on the bottom. The divider line is right about here, right about here. And can you see that color difference again? So original footage up here. Roadcaster footage down here, yes, we are indeed getting some sort of weird green tint coming out of the Roadcaster. Now let's talk about sharpness real quick. We're just going to zoom in to 400% here and we're going to compare the original footage versus the Roadcaster. So right now, this is all original out of the Ninja. So you are going to see some of that noise and grain in the background. Again, it's a cropped camera sensor and we're zoomed into 400%. So this is all Ninja footage. The Roadcaster footage is turned off right now. It's disabled. I'm gonna bring it back in. Okay, so you can see what's happening here when I bring the Roadcaster footage back in. I'll turn it off one more time. So this is all original and then Roadcaster. So the compression in the Roadcaster is assisting somewhat in removing some of this grain and noise in the image. Kind of interesting. But you are seeing the difference here. There is definitely some sort of green tint going on here. So just want to bring this all to your attention because it's very interesting. So who's the real winner here? Well, I think it's obviously the image coming out of the Roadcaster video. You can see far more detail and information in the shadows and the highlights on the Roadcaster video footage even though it's a compressed UVC signal out of the USB port on the Roadcaster video. It looks way better than anything I've seen coming out of the ATEM SDI Extreme ISO. So we are seeing a subtle tint of green on the Roadcaster footage, but it just matches way closer to that original footage. It's also keeping a lot more of that sharpness. So definitely winner, Roadcaster video, hands down. What do you think? Let me know down below in the comment section.